Newsflash, you could have not come to paradise and just taken Whitney out for a nice taco dinner, but okay. Oh, hey everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm kind of going through a lot, so if I seem a little off, that's why. But I still wanted to put this video out for you guys because I really do so love putting out these videos, making these for you, talking to you guys. It just, your comments mean the world to me. So I just wanted to give you that little heads up before I start the video. Um, be sure to subscribe because I put out new videos every single week and it helps me a whole bunch. Now, let's get to the action. So the episode starts off with JPJ having kind of a serious talk with Taisha and she's so proud of him for being remotely serious that she basically like freaks out as if it was a baby who pooped in the potty for the first time. And JPJ says, Pahina, which is page in Spanish, and Taisha thinks it's like the funniest thing to ever happen in the world. So, yeah. Then we see Dylan and Hannah G go to a little kid's birthday party, which I'm just a little confused about how they got into a random kid's birthday party. Is it a friend of the producers? How do they explain that these two gringos are just going to come into this kid's birthday party? Is that not creepy? How do they explain to the kids who these two people are? I don't know. And then Dylan's like, oh my gosh, it's so great. You know, it's like being on vacation. Yeah. Being at this child's birthday party must be a lot like vacation after all the hard work you've been doing on that deserted beach with all the free drinks and food that you could possibly want. But yeah, the birthday party is what made a vacation. And the kids at the birthday party are freaking savage because they're making him say I love you. And then also the one kid takes a bite out of the birthday cake with just his face, like no forks or anything. He just bites the side of the cake. And honestly, iconic. Back at the beach, we see Connor reminiscing about the wedding where apparently he really connected to Whitney okay and he wants her to come down the stairs next and I, I'm just like is this like a freaking catalog can we just pick whoever we want to come down the stairs I do not understand the rules of this operation and then he claims that he would have connected with Whitney more if Kaylin hadn't like stole him away from her and I'm just like dude you were literally like in love with Kaylin now you're blaming her for stopping your thing with Whitney uh newsflash you could have not come to paradise and just taken Whitney out for a nice taco dinner but okay in the ultimate extra move Connor's like well I guess I'm just gonna go home if Whitney's not coming and then like 45 minutes later Whitney shows up they even show the cars passing because the editors are just like this season and <clears throat> you're telling me that they got Demi's girlfriend in, but they couldn't tell Connor that Whitney was on her way. Like, I understand that it's, like, dramatic or whatever, but isn't that just, like... At some point, like, this is manipulation, right? Like, I'm not crazy. Then, of course, we gotta go back to the old lovebirds, uh, Clay and Nicole. And he's talking about all these reasons that he enjoys spending time with her. Which apparently includes that she's always late to breakfast. And... When he's saying all these things, it looks like he is in physical pain. Like, it's like he's back getting denied from the NFL all over again. And Nicole makes the stunning announcement that she doesn't want to get engaged to someone who doesn't know how he feels about her. Yeah, traditionally, you don't get engaged unless you're in love, but, you know, what do I know? In a truly special moment, we see Taisha take JPJ up to a secluded area so she can draw him like one of her French boys. And, you know, the whole comparison is obviously an homage to Titanic, and it can't mm, help but feel like, is this mean that the relationship's gonna go down like the Titanic did? And then turns out it did, so I am a psychic. But also, did we just now notice that JPJ kind of looks like a young Leo DeCap? I'm just saying, I noticed it last night for the first time, thought it was interesting. Then we see Taisha on the edge of like the precipice there and JPJ's behind her and says king of the world or whatever. But I just couldn't help but be nervous that she was gonna like fall off because that's just like a bamboo railing, okay? It, it's hot there, there's humidity. Who knows what bugs have been chewing on there? You know, I got a little anxious. Now, why don't we go to the rose ceremony discussion? Why don't we? So <laughs> Matt starts it off by saying that he has a deep, spiritual emotional connection with Sydney that breathes like a supermodel so you know <laughs> what he's gonna do not pick her so that was very upsetting uh, that our boy Matt is such a tool and then Haley is talking about Luke P Luke S Luke S it's Luke S that's right because it sounds like Lucas and saying that he's a poor man's version of Nick Vile which we've heard a million times but then she's saying like I've seen Nick Vile and he's like a hundred times hotter than Luke and I'm just like what's with the bullying and the savagery for no reason like calm down no one's even giving you a rose I don't know why you think you're high and mighty but okay sis 
in what is perhaps the most savage Chris Harrison move ever, Luke tries to give his rose away and she doesn't want it. And then Chris comes out and says, this has never happened before. D does anyone want his rose? Anybody? Anybody? No, didn't think so. And it's just like so sad. He didn't say that. Let's just clarify. He didn't say those exact words, but he might as well have because it was so uncomfy and everyone was just looking around and Dylan was trying not to laugh and it was just no bueno. And in a delightful round of karma, we see that Brie ends up dumping Matt because she's like, you just think I'm a supermodel and you don't know me on an emotional level and I want someone who sees me for more than that. So boom, get roasted. And Angela breaks up with that dude whose name I don't even know. Now that things are serious, Nicole's talking to Clay and she's like, wow, you look so happy to see me. I've never seen that, a smile on your face when you've seen me before. And I'm like, yep, that sounds like a healthy relationship. Where the emotions hit the freaking fan jpj and taisha so jpj and taisha are talking and she's and jpj says i dance with you at bachelor prom at paradise prom and one day i want to dance with you at our wedding and it was emotional and beautiful and she's like she kisses him which makes you think like okay you know she's feeling it and so she's just not there yet which is fine you're allowed to take as much time as you want to fall in love like you don't have to fall in love in these two months that you're on paradise but for some reason, they're ending the relationship, even though she just wasn't there yet. Like, clearly she likes spending time with him. So it was just very confusing. And then they play, like, a freaking montage with all their cute moments. And I was not ready for it. It's like some kind of montage thinking that one of them died or something. It was very emotional. And it hit me right in the feels. And he, he goes away and says, thank you for all the magical moments you've given me in my life. And she runs after him like the freaking notebook. And he carries her. Then he leaves. And I just, I don't understand. And that was pretty much the episode. So um, now we have four couples left. Let me know what you thought about the whole JPJ Tasha thing. Do you think it's weird that he left even though she just wasn't there yet? I feel like they could have just hung out longer and it was okay that they weren't in love. I don't know. Let me know below. If you liked that episode, be sure to subscribe because we've got the finale coming up next week and it helps me a whole bunch. Subscribe.